Hello, hello, here we are once again, um, hypothesis testing on two population variances. This time, of course, now we change it up a little bit and we're doing two-tailed tests. How do we know it's a two-tailed test? Let's read the problem and find out. So uh, this one is coming, uh, I've copied it from problem 10 to A. So not sure if you've done all of those problems yet, but this was a two population t test. So here we had we we were told by a friend that golden retrievers are a faster breed of dog than border collies. As a dog lover, you are interested in determining whether or not the data would support such a claim. So we take uh, a sample of golden retrievers and border collies, put them on a hundred meter dog race, gather their times. And here we find the average time for the Golden Retriever and for the Border Collie. And back in um, Chapter 10, Module 10, we performed a test to see whether or not the average speed of the uh, Golden Retriever, or I should say the average time for a Golden Retriever, was in fact less than the average time for the Border Collie, because then that would allow us to determine if it's faster. Now, when we're doing two population t-tests, you may recall that we have to make some assumption about the population variances because that determines how we calculate the variance and that determines how we calculate degrees of freedom, whether or not we assume the population variances are equal or not. So, in this problem, now we're going to see, develop a test to determine if the assumption of equal variances was appropriate. So in, in module 10, when we did this exercise, we assumed that the variances were equal. That gave us a simple calculation for degrees of freedom. Was that assumption appropriate? So now we have the tools to actually determine whether or not we should have used that assumption. So here I'm gonna look at a two-tailed F-test. Now, we are still going to follow the same uh, naming convention of how we're going to define our populations. So remember, that F-test, that sample statistic, is the ratio of those two sample variances where, and again, we always formulate this with the larger sample variance in the numerator. And for the same reason as we did for the one-tail test, the one-tail test that we've just completed in module 11, because we are limited by that F distribution table that we only have upper tail critical values, we only have upper tail uh, probabilities, and only four of them. So we define our terms, we calculate our test statistic in a way that it will always fall on the upper portion of that F table, which is where we have the information about. It would be as if doing a t-test, you always had to define your terms so that your test statistic were positive, so that your test statistic was always on that one side of the distribution, right? With two populations, you can always switch it up. So even though we're doing a two-tailed test, I'm still going to follow that same convention. So here I'm going to have my variances, and I need variance 1 oops, to be whichever one has the larger variance or the larger standard deviation. So here I have standard deviations of 183 and 157 for the retrievers and border collies respectively. So that means that the retrievers have the larger variance. So they are going to be my population one and the border collies my population two. This is a two-tailed test. And so there it is. Why do I formulate it like this? Again, because if the evidence supports the null hypotheses, then we have evidence to show that that assumption that we made was appropriate. If the evidence supports the alternative, well then, then we have evidence to show that we should not have made that assumption. And maybe if we really wanted to be precise, we might go back and redo that test.
I'm not going to do that here, but we're focused just on whether or not that assumption was appropriate or not. So we've got everything we need. We're doing this. Ah, well, the T test was o alpha O5. Let's do the F test at alpha O5 as well. So this is going to be 1.83 squared, 1.57 squared. That gives us a test statistic. Let's see here, divided by 157 squared. That gives me a test statistic of 1.36. Now, what distribution am I working with? We're going to go with the p-value and the critical value. So this is going to be alpha is 0.05. My degrees of freedom, so I have the retrievers, are population 1. They're in the numerator. I have 29 retrievers, so that's 28 degrees of freedom. 31 border collies, so that's 30. So I have 28 numerator and 30 denominator degrees of freedom. So let's come down here. I have my test statistic is 136. There's some stuff from a previous exercise. Let's keep going further and further. Oh, there we go. So my degrees of freedom, again, I have 28 and 30. 28 in the numerator, so that will round to 30. And I have 30 in the denominator. And there we go. There's my four critical values. There's my four probabilities. My test statistic was 136. So my test statistic is smaller than the smallest, right? If I, let me just clean that up a little bit. Here's that, oops, here's that F distribution. The smallest value that I have there is 1.6. And that's giving me an area in that upper tail of 0.1. Well, my test statistic was 1.36. So my test statistic, 136, is somewhere over here. which means that my p-value, that value, that probability in the upper tail, must be greater than 0.1. So if we come back up to our problem, my p-value must be greater than 0.1. That critical value coming down to that same distribution, that critical value at alpha 0.05 is 1.84. So my critical value is 1.84. There's that test statistic. So what are we gonna find? There's that critical value that defines my rejection space. Here's my test statistic, 1.36. That gives me an area in that upper tail, uh, something greater than 0.1. How are we doing? Did I make a mistake? You bet I made a mistake. And it's absolutely, it's a great mistake to make because it shows how easy it is to forget about the fact that we're doing a two-tailed test. And so if I'm doing a two-tailed test, what changes? The way we obtain our p-value changes and the way we obtain our critical value changes. Even though I have formulated this test so that the test statistic falls in the upper tail, 
we in fact still technically have a rejection region in that lower tail. But like any two-tailed test, there's always one critical value that is irrelevant to the problem. Right, if we're doing a two-tailed t-test, if I have a positive test statistic, the relevant critical value is the positive critical value. I don't care about the negative one. So when we're doing two-tailed tests with the F distribution, I absolutely have two critical values, one on each side of that distribution. However, only the critical value in the upper tail will ever be relevant because of how we formulate our test statistic. And so, what I have to remember to do is we have to divide that alpha by 2 to get my critical value. And my p-value, well, this has to be multiplied by 2. So, in fact, my p-value is greater than 0.2. And my test statistic, well, that actually corresponds with alpha divided by 2 which is 0.025. So my test statistic here corresponds with 0.025, that critical value 2.074. Okay, now let's change things, let's fix that 2.074. It doesn't really change our conclusion in this case. We're still going to come to the same conclusion. But certainly, we see just how strong our evidence here is. Our p-value is greater than 0.2. Our test statistic here, that critical value is 2.074. Our test statistic is in that do not reject space. We have pretty strong evidence here to support the null hypotheses, which means we're unable to show that these variances are statistically different from each other, which means going back to that problem in module 10, the assumption of equal variances was not appropriate we actually should have assumed unequal variance, and therefore that would have influenced other aspects of how we did that problem. Okay, so we've got everything here now for a two-population F-test, uh, a two-tail test. And again, be really careful not to make that mistake, and don't forget when we've got that equality, that influences how we get our p-value. That influences how we get our critical value. Okay, thank you for watching, guys. Bye-bye.